So recently I reached 300 subscribers. Oh, I'm sorry, 3000 subscribers. Ignore the one. Thank you guys so much. It really means a lot. But you know what else is coinciding with this? I ran out of ideas, at least until September. So I decided, why not make a Q&A video to pass the time and better connect with you guys? So here I am answering the questions you asked in my community post. If I didn't answer your question, I'm really sorry. Either you repeated a question someone else asked first, said something I couldn't answer, or missed the deadline. Obviously, this video is meant to be chill, so it's going to be low on editing and scripting and all that fancy schmancy stuff. So sit back and enjoy whatever I put on screen, or just listen to the video. Do whatever you want. Let's get into it. Why did you call yourself the Sunshine Feeler? I thought it was a clever name that would make people laugh at the reference. That's literally it. Do you like Sonic R in any way other than the music? Well, now it's time to tell everyone what they've been waiting to hear. No, the controls are so bad, dude. But this is a game I absolutely recommend playing. Just hearing the soundtrack and watching footage of the game doesn't do it justice. When you actually experience the game, you really get a feel for how unfitting the music is. It's this large, bombastic, well-made music with these barren, low-poly levels. It almost has a post-apocalyptic vibe to it. Like the tag mode is the canon finale to the Sonic series. Everyone but these nine characters are dead, and they just pass the time by playing hide-and-seek with each other on Resort Island while bumping music that reminds them of the good times. So yeah, I like the aesthetic. Hey, actually doing what the game is about. Do you have any interest in From Software games? I do, but I haven't played them and I really need to. I have a lot of catching up to do. What games would you like to play and or talk about in a future video? I mean, I don't know. Pretty much anything I'm interested in. I don't really want to give my plans for future videos away until I'm 100% sure I'll be making them. Which is your favorite Sonic game? It's a toss up between Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles. If you asked what side of Sonic 3 and Knuckles I like better though, that's pretty easy. It's Sonic 3 because in standalone Sonic 3, you can play as Tails and save. Yeah, it's glitchier, but Sonic and Knuckles has some of the more annoying parts of the game. What are your top five Sonic games? Well, if you want to know the other three, Sonic Mania, Sonic Advance, and Sonic Generations. The last one is probably the most biased pick. If I wasn't biased, I would probably pick, I don't know, Sonic Pinball Party. What channels inspired you to start making YouTube videos? Well, obviously I got a lot of Cybershell comparisons with my earlier videos. Obviously, just like everyone else, James Rolfe and Doug Walker really influenced me. Blame it on Jorge, El Supersonic Q, and Wang as well. As for newer ones, LS Mark and Magic Mush have really influenced me. Donkey really influenced my sense of humor, but I guess I'm getting off track. I don't really have a definitive answer as to who specifically made me want to start making YouTube videos, but I have a lot of influences. Is Tails real? Uh, there's a CIA agent with a gun to my head right now. All right, this one is a bit of a long one, but I'll answer the basic questions. Do you think Sonic X Shadow Generations is a waste of money? Since you also said that you're not swayed by the new content that much, Honestly, I would just wait for the game to be on sale. However, I think for people who never played the original or people who really want the Shadow Generations part, I would say it's worth it. At least if those things end up being good. I'm not in any place to give anyone financial advice. I'm broke, so I'm not going to buy it this year. But I think it looks interesting. Do you think Lost World 3DS is a good game? Never played it. I'm not a god who owns every game. Believe it or not, not everyone who makes gaming videos on YouTube has a collection reminiscent of James Rolfe's or Scott Wozniak's. But I would love to try it because I hear conflicting things about it, mostly negative. Have you ever played Killer Instinct? Yes, at least the SNES one. I'm not really into the Western fighters like It, Mortal Kombat, and Injustice as much, but they're fun and they definitely have a place. I mean, they're definitely more casual friendly. I really liked playing it on emulators as a kid, but I'm not really into it anymore. 
What are your thoughts on Sonic Extreme? I already kind of said it in my Sonic Adventure video, but I think it's an interesting piece of history, but it probably would have sucked. I don't know what effects it would have had on Sega or the video game industry had it released, but it was incredibly directionless. Eh, I guess not a lot would have changed then. What type of stuff do you want to do with this channel? I like covering obscure stuff, whether it's obscure things about popular things or just obscure things in general. I actually don't like making opinion-based videos that much because it's really stressful if you make a mistake, but also I have very strong opinions on art and especially game design, but I prefer to cover obscure things. Favorite fighting game? That's a tough one, but probably Soul Calibur. I mean, literally everyone loves this game. It's the most universally liked fighting game. Critics like it, casuals like it, gamers who aren't into fighting games like it, and fighting game fans like it. It's so good gameplay-wise and aesthetically. It has issues, but they're really obscure. Seal the deal or no seal the deal? No seal the deal. Seals or penguins? Penguins. Because penguins are cool. LeBron versus Spider-Man in a basketball match? Everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. What made you like Sonic? What made everyone else like Sonic, pretty much? I was seven, I thought the characters looked cool, and went from there. Opinion on the Sonic movies. Any hope for the third one? Okay, this is really embarrassing. I need to catch up on the movies because I miss them because I was in my whole apathetic towards Sonic phase. I've only seen parts of the first movie and I haven't watched the second movie. Keanu Reeves' Shadow sounds awesome though, if it ever comes out. Any other topic you want to talk about that isn't games? Well, I already have videos that aren't gaming related, but they're some of my worst performing videos. There's a Lost Media rabbit hole, which is a bit outdated now, where I talk about some of the most popular ongoing Lost Media searches, some gaming related, some not. There's my video on the Lost first full-length animated film creation, a topic so obscure my video is literally the most popular thing on a, online. There's my video where I rank all the Disney Oswald shorts, which is my worst performing video ever by a mile. And there's my comeback video after that where I talk about Bart the General and just weird crappy internet animation in general, which actually kind of did pretty well and is my best performing non-gaming video. That being said, even though these videos didn't perform too well, I like most of these videos. They're some of my favorites. However, I would like to do some videos talking about music loss media in the future. I just don't know how to make it work with my nerdy audience. No insult, obviously. I'd also like to cover comic book stuff as well. I mean, my first video was about a manga. So if you know any cool comic book stuff I could cover, please tell me. I love Sonic Heroes. Oh, I get it. It's Jeopardy. Thoughts on Sonic Crackers and would it have been better or worse than Knuckles Chaotix? I think it absolutely would not have been better than Chaotix because at least Chaotix has something going for it with the characters. I have no clue what would have happened if Sonic Crackers released, but it definitely would have been a bigger deal. What's the worst Sonic game in your opinion? There's a pretty obvious answer to this. Sonic Jam for the GameCom. And yeah, I get it, Sonic 06 isn't even in the top 5 worst Sonic games, but it's definitely the most disastrous. Hell, it might not just be the most disastrous Sonic game, but the most disastrous game of all time. It can't be overstated how negative the impact of this game was on the franchise, on Sega, and on the video game industry as a whole. Obviously, a game like it was going to exist at some point, but it sucks that it had to be Sega and Sonic. Have you ever eaten a Sonic popsicle? No. Tell me how they taste if you have. Do you like Mario? Uh, yeah. Who doesn't? I can't deny that it consistently sets the standards for what a good game should be. Any videos you scrapped midway through? I haven't scrapped any videos midway through, but I've scrapped tons of concepts. I guess if I had to give you an example, before I made the Bart the General and Sonic Pocket Adventure videos, I was thinking about making a Sonic 3 video in the same style as my Sonic 2 video, but literally nothing new can be said about that game. What have you learned from art creation so far? First impressions are important. Videos are linear and people are always going to start at the beginning, so you better nail it. For example, don't forget to turn the zoom off in your first edit of the whole video. Cartman or Kyle? 
I mean, obviously Kyle, but Cartman's definitely the better character. Would you possibly consider making a Rayman video? Yeah. As far as other platforming mascots go, besides Sonic, what other ones do you like? Well, obviously Mario, and by extension Donkey Kong, Yoshi, Wario, and Rayman, like we just mentioned. I also like Gex for the same reasons as everyone else, and Banjo-Kazooie, and Mega Man 2 if you consider him a mascot. I could never get into the PlayStation mascots as a kid, though. Not Crash, not Spyro, not Jack, not Ratchet and Clank, not Sly Cooper. I mean, I like them, but I'm not particularly invested in them. Two things I was absolutely surrounded by as a kid and should have gotten into were Crash and Pokemon, but I just never did. 2D or 3D Sonic games, which you prefer? I think I made it clear that I prefer 2D Sonic, but I don't hate 3D Sonic. They really just perfected the mechanical core of 2D Sonic with the first game, and the formula is much harder to fuck up. Which art direction you find best for the franchise? No, to, okay, specify which franchise. Anyways, I'm fine with whatever, but I think the simpler designs are just better. The newer art direction is fine, it's just bland. I don't think that the blandness is that detrimental though. I like the Uakawa designs a lot, they really do a good job of emphasizing the cool aspect of the characters. They're the reason I got into the series as a kid. A lot of people don't like how lanky they are, but it emphasizes the teenager aspect. The one thing you couldn't really infer from Sonic's original design. But I'm not gonna lie and say pudgy Sonic isn't just more universally appealing. Nor am I going to act like the addition of eye color doesn't kind of ruin the simplicity of the design. Of course, you can't criticize the design without being compared to Mario to Plumber and Richard Kuda, so why am I even trying? Would you like a brand new art direction from newer games or is everything fine as is? I would love a cell shaded game that looks like Yui Karasuno's art, but I don't think the new games look particularly bad. Here's a similar question. If there's something personally you change about the Sonic cast character and or art direction, and even gameplay, what would it be? Gameplay wise, I think they should make a new Sonic Advance style game. Don't limit the modern designs to 3D games, and don't limit the classic designs to 2D games. What is the most challenging Sonic game you ever played? I mean, Sonic Jam for the GameCom, but if you want an answer that's a game that's not hard because it's busted, I guess Sonic 2 for the Game Gear. Are you excited for Sonic X Shadow Generations? I mean, like I said, I'm not going to be getting it, but I do think it looks interesting. Can you please show us your PC setup? How come every mascot character got rebooted but Mario? How has Mario always managed to stay relevant and keep a good reputation? Do you think Sega is taking the Sonic series in a good direction? I don't know. You never know what crazy shit they'll pull next. Being kidnapped by the Joker is a less scary and unpredictable experience than being a Sonic fan. What are your plans for future videos Sonic-wise? I'm planning on making a video on the history of the Sonic Hacking Contest when the Sonic Hacking Contest comes around. And if any big new updates come out for Sonic 3 beta stuff or anything I covered in my early videos, I'll definitely be doing videos on them. Opinion on Donkey Kong. I love silly monkey. Why? What hot take that you have will most likely get you killed? Oh, I see how it is. So you want me to die. I don't actually know. You can keep watching my videos to find out. What motivate you to start making videos? I don't want to get too deep into it because it's kind of depressing, but I just needed a way to express myself in a way that would actually reach people. What is your favorite video game character of all time? I don't have a favorite now, but as a kid, I like Yoshi the most. How's your day, afternoon, night going? Eh, it's fine. I have a question. How are you holding up after the incident? I don't know what you're talking about, but I might like your videos, but what are your thoughts on Sonic Prime and also the Mega Man box arts? I haven't watched Sonic Prime either. As for Mega Man box arts, the Western one's funny, Japanese one's pretty. I was going to ask something stupid like if you're going to act in the Skibbity Toilet movie, which I will, but something you said in what of your videos along the lines of, I play RPGs for the gameplay and fighting games for the plot, 
which I said story, not plot, really made me think about what is your criteria for a good game in general? Well, those aren't really my criteria, but it depends on the game. I just judge a game on how much it functions versus how much it messes up at providing a fun experience for the audience it's aimed at, both on its own and in comparison to other games. I don't actually find it as interesting to judge games from my personal biases as I don't really have the most interesting stories to tell regarding my personal experiences with most games. Favorite Sonic character. It always changes. One of these four. Any future plans for your channel? Not giving any of them away because I hate promising stuff then realizing I can't or don't want to do it. What's your favorite music genre? Hip hop. What is your favorite Mega Man game? All series included. Thank God you said all series included because it's X, the first X. It's the best designed in terms of having actually manageable difficulty. What was your first video game? Literally no one on the planet can answer this question. I have no clue what I was playing as a toddler. I can't even really dig up my earliest gaming memory. Have you played Soma? No, but I might try it out. What kind of music do you listen to? Electronic, classical, trap, dubstep, the legendary Stardust Cowboy, etc. Ah yes, my favorite genres. I listen to pretty much anything, but primarily hip hop and R&B. What's your top three songs from any Sonic games? Songs is too hard, so I'm going with soundtracks. Number one is Sonic CD's Japanese soundtrack. I like the US one too, by the way. Number two is the one I named my channel after. Number three is Sonic 2. Number four is Sonic 1. And number five is Sonic Adventure. Even with its lying ass lyrics. Knuckles doesn't chuckle. Sonic the Hedgehog doesn't show off and criticize. Sure, buddy. Have you ever heard of Plock on the SNES? And if you have, have you considered making a video about it? Of course. Rest in peace to Jeff Folan. But I don't really think I have anything to say about it that hasn't been said before. Is Sonic 4 peak? My opinion on Sonic 4 is that I don't hate the idea of a 2D Sonic game using the modern designs where it's just Sonic and Eggman, but the physics and visuals suck and there's something else wrong with it. Oh yeah, the fact that they took this unrelated game and just called it Sonic 4 to sell some units. Yeah, that's about it. It's not horrible, but the name is an insult to fans who wanted a proper follow-up to Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Which is your favorite Darkstalker character and why? Even for someone who's deeper into the series than a lot of its other admirers, it's probably Morrigan. But if I had to pick another, it would probably be Lord Raptor or BB Hood. Gameplay-wise, I know I said my main was BB Hood in my first Darkstalkers video, but I actually kind of like QB more. She has the shortest move list of all the characters, so it's very easy to memorize all of them. And she doesn't really have anything that's hard to execute outside of her guard cancel and some combos. Honestly, with a series as good as this, I think it would be easier to name my least favorite character, which is probably Anakaris. You know your series is good when your worst character is a cool mummy. Do you think Mega Man 8 is one of the best in the series? It's cool. I don't really like the structure shakeup that it and Mega Man 7 had though, so it's not really one of my favorites. How do you make your videos? iMovie. It sucks, but I try my best. What is the video you enjoyed making the most? Without a doubt, the creation video. I hit a gold mine when I realized that I had found something so significant yet so obscure that there's barely any other information on it online. I'm very glad to say I was the first person to make a video on the first ever animated feature. How do you feel about the insecurity in the Sonic community and their incessant defense of games that are not polished enough to be enjoyed in earnest? I disagree that unpolished games can't be enjoyed in earnest, if that's what you were trying to say, but I kind of just made the whole Sonic fans versus criticisms video about the insecurity of the fan base. There's nothing wrong with liking or defending your favorite games, mostly, but I do think a huge portion of the discussion around the less favorably viewed games comes from a place of insecurity and wanting people to agree with you rather than a healthy exchange of opinions. 
the world would be a much better place if we could be like, hey, here's why I don't like this game. Oh, cool. I see where you're coming from, but I disagree. Here's why I like it. Oh, cool. I understand. I may or may not still disagree. Instead of, hey, here's why I don't like this game. You're wrong. Literally everything about this game is good. You don't understand it. You're spreading a false narrative. You should like this game like the rest of us. Can you do a cool backflip? What's your pedigree with fighting games? Do you play, just follow the community, etc.? I think I said it in my first Darkstalkers video, but I'm good at fighting games, just not good enough to compete. But I do follow the stuff that goes on in the FGC and would like to become more involved. But I only really side-eye the newer games to keep up with them. Favorite Sega franchise besides Sonic? Golden Streets of Virtua. On the TCRF article for Sonic R Windows, it states that there are out-of-bounds balloon objects in each level. There is a to-do note that says, find the balloon in Regal Ruin. It most likely exists, I just can't find it. It has been there for years. I just want to know, where? Where is that balloon? Will no one step up and find it? I don't know if I can be truly content until I have seen this balloon. If anyone has a copy of Sonic R for Windows and has the means to do this, spread the word. Do you watch anime at all? And if you do, what are your favorites? I don't really be watching anime like that, but I like some of the Ghibli films. I like Dragon Ball. I like JoJo's. I like Hulk Tono Ken. And I remember liking the first season of One Punch Man, though I haven't seen the rest of it. Would you be interested in making or covering an iceberg video anytime soon? Yes, in fact, I literally teased a classic animation iceberg after my Oswald video, but you guys know how that went. If you have ideas for good icebergs that haven't been done before, please hit me up. Unfortunately, I think 2024 is the year that the format has finally died. Do you plan to ever make a Discord server in the near future? I don't know how important a Discord is to building an audience, but I try to stay away from Discord, Reddit, and Twitter as much as I can. I bit the bullet and got a Twitter just because I know how big it is and a lot of people only use Twitter. I want to know what the inside of their brains look like, but okay. Honestly, I might start a Discord once I reach 10k and start a Patreon, but I don't think it's that important. If you do collect or read any comics, what are your favorite comic arcs slash runs? I'm not a collector, but Lee and Ditko's run on Spider-Man, Claremont's run on X-Men, and DC's Crisis events are some of my favorites. Would you ever be willing to cover the origin of Capcom's Star Gladiator as a Star Wars game as it was originally pitched as? Definitely, if anything comes out about it that's more interesting than just that. Do you think the points you made on the Sonic fans vs. Criticism video can apply to Spongebob fans. Most Spongebob fans are complaining about the series and the recent movies, some even knowing they hate the films instead of ignoring it and letting the property starve. I don't think the main point really can because I don't really hear too many people getting upset about people criticizing Spongebob, but I'm sure some of my points can be applied. That being said, I think you should be allowed to engage with stuff that you may not like otherwise because you might find something you do like. What do you think is one of the most overhated games of all time? Sonic the Fighters. Ever watch the YouTuber Magic Mush? Yes, shout out to Magic Mush. Favorite Nicktoon and Cartoon Network show? SpongeBob and Samurai Jack. Thoughts on Twice Upon a Time? I've known about it, but it's one of the few weird animated movies from that era I haven't really watched in full. What is your favorite horror film? Eraserhead, if that counts. I think I've heard it in one of your videos that you play fighting games for the story and RPG games for the gameplay. Why? You did. Anyways, I don't play them solely for those reasons, but fighting games are very character focused and that makes them more interesting than most older video games story-wise. And I like being able to mess around with the systems in RPGs more than their stories. All right, this comment was long and I really wanted to answer all of your questions, but I'm going to have to cut some out because there's some I don't have an answer for, some sensitive questions, and I need to teach my audience that they're not entitled, unlike some companies. 
Also, I'm kind of sick right now, if you couldn't tell throughout the rest of the video. What are your overall thoughts on the Mario series in comparison to the Sonic series? I think Sonic is the better multimedia franchise, but when it comes to video games, Mario is always held in a higher regard for being more consistent and deserves it. What are your thoughts on the Mario vs. Sonic debate, and who do you think would win in a fight between them? There's room for conversations like this, just don't take them too seriously. There's people starving in third world countries, but we gotta figure out whether Mario or Sonic would win in a fight. Honestly, I think Sonic would win in any situation because he has better defense than Mario. What is your favorite piece of media from every medium? This is probably the weirdest thing about me, but I don't have solidified favorites for anything. I mean, I couldn't even choose one answer for less broad topics like favorite fighting game or favorite Sonic game. Could you at some point make a review slash analysis of the early Boost trilogy and explain how you think the trilogy improved over time? Bold of you to assume that I thought they improved over time. I do though, so. Anyways, the topic has kind of been treaded multiple times before. Like I said, I like covering obscure topics and I only talk about my opinions when I'm super passionate, so this would be the last video I would be interested in making. That doesn't mean I'm not open to discussing those three games in the future though. What are your thoughts on the current decade so far? How has your life changed since 2020 started, either drastically or small? Honestly, I think I recovered from 2020 surprisingly well for what I was going through. Obviously, I think the biggest change that happened was starting to make videos this year. What's your favorite crossover, and what's one you dream of having? Probably Smash Bros. I would love to see Sonic and Looney Tunes crossover, not just Tails gets trolled. If you could rank the 3D Sonic games before Sonic Adventure 1 from worst to best, what would the order be, and what would you be considered part of the rankings? Worst to best, Sonic Labyrinth, Sonic Blast, Sonic 3D Blast, Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic R, Christmas Nights, Sonic World, and Sonic the Fighters. How popular do you think Creation was when it released? And how popular do you think it was 50 years later to justify some form of 50 year anniversary fanfare? I have no idea. It could have only been screened once at one location for all we know. Given how obscure it is today, I find it hard to imagine it being popular then. If it was particularly popular, you would think it would come up a lot before the release of Snow White, but no, when Snow White came out, people couldn't even fathom the idea of an animated feature. The article for the 50th anniversary was most likely a local Oregon news source, but I still don't know the full context. There's also no mention of the film between 1966 and recently when mentions of it started appearing on the internet. It's absurdly obscure for something so significant. Secondly, on creation, do you think those four reviews could have been from people who saw the film at the Southern Oregon Historical Society? I actually don't believe they have a reel of the film. Also, literally anyone can rate a film on IMDb. What is your stance on animation companies like Disney and DreamWorks using AI? AI should be used as a tool. People hated digital art software, people hated autotune, people hated CGI, and now they're an everyday part of an artist's repertoire. But AI is a little different. I'd say it's more comparable to the internet as a tool than something like autotune, in that it can be used for nefarious purposes. But I think a lot of the backlash to AI is overblown. We have people going on witch hunts just because human-made art looks too much like AI art. I think artists need to accept it as a tool and not write it off because it will definitely take away a lot of the unnecessary pain that comes with creating art and open up new possibilities. I feel like a lot of artists just want to feel validated for drawing pictures because it's something anyone can do but you're already validated by doing it well. The whole art is pain idea is stupid. There are boomers mad at you for using digital software where you can erase your mistakes rather than painting on a canvas where you can't. People naturally get upset when they put so much work into learning one thing and then a new thing comes along and makes things easier. My biggest concern with AI is the accessibility. Entrepreneurship is impossible with how quick capitalism picks things up now. 
You can't go from rags to riches by becoming an entrepreneur in the field of using AI as a tool because the people who already have access to these tools already have the ability to monetize them. So the only people who benefit really are the rich. I think it will become a part of an artist's toolkit, but it can also be used for nefarious purposes. I can see it being used by corporations to replace all art with content, and the world is morally bankrupt enough to support it. I mean, we already have people rotting their brains away on Twitter and TikTok. What makes you think some absolute degenerates won't support AI content? It's up to you to keep that from happening as an artist or as someone with a platform to talk about it. Obviously, you shouldn't make it everyone's social responsibility to stop companies from replacing artists with AI, but if you care enough and have the means to reach enough people, it is absolutely your responsibility. And all done. Thanks for watching.